SpaceX just spent $17 billion, 75% of NASA's entire yearly budget, not on rockets, not on spaceships, but on invisible radio waves. Why? This single move gives them control over a piece of the digital highway so scarce? Rivals have been battling for it behind closed doors for years. And with this spectrum comes the power to block competitors, dictate who gets online, and potentially reshape the internet itself. Was this truly about innovation? Or is there something they're not telling us? What's really at stake when one company buys domination of the airwaves? $17 billion. That's how much SpaceX just threw down. Not for rockets, not for spaceships, but for something you can't even see or touch. 75% of NASA's entire annual budget. All spent on the rights to use a slice of the air itself. Why? Because in the world of wireless communication, radio spectrum is the most precious resource there is. You can't make more of it. There are only so many frequencies to go around and every single one is regulated, auctioned, and fiercely protected by governments like the FCC in the United States. Think of spectrum like a superhighway. Each frequency band is a lane, and every company, SpaceX, Verizon, Apple, Amazon, wants their own lane to drive their data on. But there aren't enough lanes for everyone. And if you don't have a license, you're stuck on the shoulder, crawling along while the competition flies by. That license doesn't just give you a right, it gives you power. The power to block competitors, to guarantee your signal gets through, and to lock out anyone who didn't pay for access. For SpaceX, this isn't about a few more satellites or a faster internet connection. This is about owning the road itself. With exclusive spectrum, they can run their Starlink satellites at full throttle, without worrying about interference or rival companies cutting in. And with the FCC acting as the ultimate traffic cop, only those with the right paperwork get to use these lanes. No exceptions, no shortcuts. But here's the catch. Most of the best lanes were already claimed years ago. Some companies, like EchoStar, have been sitting on massive blocks of spectrum, barely using them, just waiting for the right buyer. Meanwhile, tech giants and telecoms have been circling, desperate for a way in. The scarcity is so extreme, some analysts say spectrum rights are now more valuable than oil fields or gold mines. So when SpaceX dropped $17 billion on these invisible lanes, it wasn't just a business deal, it was a land grab. One that could decide who controls the future of the internet itself. Charlie Ergen, the billionaire behind EchoStar, treated spectrum licenses the way a dragon treats gold, hoarding them, barely using them waiting for the right moment. For years, EchoStar's S-Band and AWS 4 licenses sat idle, drawing criticism from regulators and rivals who called it spectrum squatting. The FCC watched as EchoStar's portfolio, worth more than the company itself, gathered dust while the rest of the industry scrambled for scraps. It wasn't ambition or technical breakthrough that forced their hand, it was debt over $10 billion of it coming due fast, and a regulatory clock ticking down. EchoStar faced the risk of losing the licenses entirely if they didn't act. The solution? Strike a deal with SpaceX that would stun the industry. The $17 billion price tag wasn't just a mountain of cash. It was a creative financial puzzle. Half of it, $8.5 billion paid in cash. The other half, $8.5 billion paid in SpaceX stock. That means EchoStar didn't just walk away with a payday. They became shareholders in Elon Musk's private empire. But that's not all. SpaceX also agreed to directly pay about $2 billion in interest on EchoStar's outstanding bonds through 2027, propping up the company's finances and calming nervous creditors. Money flowed straight from Musk's coffers to bondholders, bypassing EchoStar's operating accounts entirely. The mechanics were as complex as the motives. A chunk of SpaceX stock went into escrow, locked up until regulatory hurdles were cleared. Cash payments were staggered.
tied to closing dates and FCC approvals. If SpaceX hit certain build-out milestones, EchoStar could collect even more. And all the while, EchoStar's management and top investors watch their options vest and their golden parachutes deploy. The real winners in the short term? Hedge funds and bondholders who saw junk bonds rally overnight as the deal was announced. Notably, Boost Mobile, the wireless brand EchoStar picked up in a government-forced merger, wasn't included in the sale. This was about Spectrum and nothing else. No side deals, no secret handshakes, at least none that made it into the filings. The direct-to-sell Spectrum, once just a bargaining chip, now became the foundation for SpaceX's next move. With the paperwork signed and the money flowing, the stage was set for a technical leap that would make the old satellite business look like dial-up. Inside SpaceX's engineering labs, the numbers are almost too big to believe. With the stroke of a pen and $17 billion, the company unlocked enough spectrum to supercharge every new Starlink satellite. Not just a little faster, 20 times the throughput per satellite, and a network that can carry 100 times more data than before. That's not marketing hype. It's the difference between a rural town streaming in HD and an entire continent online at once. The secret isn't just in more satellites, it's in what those satellites can do now. Thanks to the newly acquired Spectrum, each Starlink Gen 3 satellite will pack advanced phased array antennas and multi-band radios, able to blast data across multiple frequencies at once. Think of it like switching from a single-lane country road to a 10-lane expressway. Except every car is a gigabyte. And they're all moving at light speed. Starship's massive payload capacity means SpaceX can launch heavier, more powerful satellites loaded with bigger solar panels, stronger transmitters, and more sophisticated onboard processors. This leap isn't just about streaming Netflix in the middle of the ocean. It's about direct-to-sell connections, turning every ordinary smartphone into a satellite phone, no extra hardware needed. That's a nightmare for rivals like Amazon's Kuiper or Apple's Global Star. With 2 GHz S-Band and AWS-4 Spectrum, SpaceX can bypass ground towers entirely, covering dead zones, disaster areas, and remote villages that telecoms have ignored for decades. The numbers speak for themselves. Up to 20 times more data per satellite, a hundredfold increase across the whole constellation, and the technical muscle to leave every competitor in the dust. For the first time, one company holds the keys to a truly global, space-based digital highway, and the rest of the industry is scrambling to keep up. Amazon's Kuiper project just hit a brick wall. With SpaceX locking down the most valuable spectrum, Kuiper's satellite internet dreams now face a digital dead end. The FCC filings spell it out. Without access to these frequencies, Ama Amazon can't deliver high-speed connections to millions of customers. Their objections fill the public docket, warning that this deal hands SpaceX a chokehold over the very airwaves Kuiper needs to survive. The language is blunt, a monopoly in the making, one that could freeze out rivals for decades. Apple isn't immune either. Up to now, Apple's emergency iPhone SOS service relied on Global Star's limited spectrum. But with SpaceX's new capacity, rumors swirl of secret talks between Apple and Musk's team. If Apple ditches Global Star for Starlink, the world's most valuable company could tie its next generation of devices directly to SpaceX's network. That's not just a tech upgrade, it's a potential alliance that could reshape the balance of power in global communications. The implications are massive. Two trillion dollar empires, one controlling the hardware, the other, the invisible highways beneath. Regulators are sounding alarms. Inside the FCC, antitrust warnings echo through closed door meetings and official filings. Some commissioners argue that allowing one company to control rockets, satellites, neat, and now the spectrum itself is tantamount to gifting a monopoly. Consumer groups warn of a future where internet access depends on the whims of a single billionaire. Is this about connecting the world 
or controlling it. The lines between innovation and domination are starting to blur. The digital gatekeeper era may have just begun. SpaceX's $17 billion Spectrum deal is equal to 75% of NASA's annual budget. An unprecedented sum for something invisible to the naked eye. The evidence shows this was not about rockets, but about securing exclusive access to radio frequencies Echostar had held for years. With these rights, SpaceX now controls Spectrum that enables 20 times more data per satellite and could multiply Starlink's global capacity by 100. FCC records confirm rivals like Amazon's Kuiper and Apple's Global Star are now at a disadvantage. And regulatory filings reveal ongoing concerns about market dominance. Yet the full terms of SpaceX's long-term alliances and the potential restrictions on competitor access remain confidential. What is clear? Control of spectrum means control of the digital highways connecting the world. Whether this is a leap for innovation or a move toward monopoly is still debated in official documents. $17 billion for invisible waves, documented, verifiable, and already reshaping the future of global connectivity.